In the last video, we introduced the general MDP framework. Our objective today is to describe a way to learn a good policy to optimize an MDP. One first question is about how we are getting the models, like the transition model and the reward model in the MDP. In traditional optimal control, and similar to the way we did things in the control module, we can build the model based on our understanding of physics. If we don't have the model, then we can do reinforcement learning. There are two branches of reinforcement learning. In model-based RL, we explicitly learn these models. In model-free RL, they are implicitly learned by our learning agent. In reinforcement learning, our objective is to find a policy that maximizes the expected return from all possible states in the state space. The first tool we're going to need is some way of evaluating how good a policy actually is. This tool is the value function. The state value function tells us, given we are in some state x and we follow policy pi, what is our expected return? Let's look at an example to make things concrete. Imagine we have this 3 by 3 grid where our objective is to get the ducky bot to the ducky in the bottom right corner. Our policy tells us which direction to go in each of the other eight grid cells. So if we start at the bottom cell, this is the path we will follow to reach the goal. Now suppose we get a minus one reward for every move we make, and we get a plus five reward for reaching our goal. And for now, let's assume the discount factor gamma equals one to make the math easy. So for the bottom state we just saw, we can calculate that our return will be minus two because we took seven steps, so minus seven, and then we reach the goal plus five. For each state, we can follow the policy until we reach the goal and then calculate the return. Doing this for each state gives us the value function. Of course, changing the policy changes the value function. If we look at the value function we just calculated, we can already see that our policy is not very good since we are taking actions that do not yield the highest possible value at the subsequent state. Using this intuition, we can update our policy by using this value function and then greedily taking actions that maximize the value at the next state. Once we have updated the policy, we can recalculate a new value function corresponding to our new policy. We iterate this process until convergence when we have achieved the optimal policy and the optimal value function. So our general approach is gonna to be to interleave evaluating the policy by estimating the value function and updating the policy based on our most up-to-date value function. This procedure is called policy iteration and is guaranteed in this discrete case to converge to the optimal policy and value function. Since we are really concerned with taking actions, it is convenient to define a slightly different value function called the action value function, denoted by Q. Q tells us our expected return given we are in state X and take action U and then follow policy pi after that. In that case, the optimal policy will be to select the action with the highest Q value in the optimal Q function. In the model-free setting, we are going to generally use this action value function since we don't have access to the process model. So now we have a procedure to obtain optimal or at least good policies. The only gaps we need to fill in are how we are going to go about evaluating and improving our policies in more practical settings. We'll cover that in the following video.